LAZ Throwback Thursdays. You heard this is three stories in one. Franklin. Some of the best classics I dropped. You heard Throwback Thursdays. I'm uploading classic videos that a lot of dudes may have not saw. You heard? Got 20,000 new subscribers. I got to drop some of these joints over. So y'all know what time it is. And y'all know I'm the king of this. You heard? Z-Boy. I was 17 years old in Franklin which was a heavily adult jail, like a real adult type of jail. You feel me? Wasn't too many at all. So this Muslim cat named Musa, I meets the dude. He in my dorm, you know what I mean? So a day he come up to me, young blood, can I get, can I get a, a, a rollie from you? And since I was one of them young niggas, I, I was stupid. I used to smoke Newports like a motherfucker, but if I ain't had no Newports, nigga, Nigga was smoking shit like kite. Real talk, nigga was smoking shit like kite. I tell you a story on how this police nigga named German that's that was a fucking murderer in Comstock. I'll tell that story later. But anyway, you understand what I'm saying? I used to be wowing out smoking shit like kite, bugle and shit like that. Don't get me fucked up. I kept New York Newports at all times. You understand what I'm saying? But when shit got fucked up and I ain't have no new ports at all, oh, best believe I roll one of them motherfucking menthol ass 10 times stronger than the new port ass kite up, nigga. You understand what I'm saying? So it's old timer, nigga. He used to be running up on me all the time. Yo, young blood, man, I get I get one of those, I get one of them rollies from you. You understand what I'm saying? So I get a nigga a little bit of tobacco, roll it up, roll it up. So he's just come hitting me in the head every day for different shit. Like, you understand what I'm saying? But he's a funny motherfucker because he used to talk like this. He'd be like, young blood, why don't you hit an old timer with one of them little cakes you got in your in your in your in your locker? Do an old timer. Look out for an old timer like me. I got my coffee. I don't got nothing to eat with this coffee. So the nigga used to have me laughing, you understand what I'm saying? Because he was a funny motherfucker. And I'm the type of nigga, if I got it, I got it. It was jail and shit. But even in jail, my nigga, anybody who knows me, I'm a generous motherfucker. If you one of my mans, nigga, whatever I got is ours. You understand what I'm saying? If I'm eating, you eating. If I'm smoking, you smoking, nigga, period. I've never been the type of nigga in my life to have anything and I don't spread love or cuff shit or be stingy. That's just not me. And anybody who knows me and grow, grew up with me, they know since the sandbox, nigga, I was a good motherfucker that always spreaded love the Brooklyn way. You understand what I'm saying? What is this nigga doing? Like, come on, my bro. You blocking the whole shit. Yeah, my nigga, can't nobody fit through there. But anyway, you know what I mean? So like, yo, anybody who knows that knows me knows that. So I used to be hit. Anybody who knows me knows that. So I used to be hitting this nigga. You feel what I'm saying? With all type of shit, snacks and tea bags and coffee or whatever the fuck we was we was eating and drinking in the mornings and shit. So me and this nigga start getting cool. So he start introducing me, trying to convert me to a Muslim and shit like that. Know what I mean? I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm Gucci at the time. Like, you know what I mean? I was, I respected Islam and shit like that. And I was listening to all the shit he was saying. But I ain't converting or turning into nothing. You understand what I'm saying? So, me and son used to be going to chow. And he, like I said, I'm 17. This nigga 45 years old, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe older than that. So, he told me. He was like, yo, let me tell you something, young blood. He was like, you a, you a, you a little naive motherfucker, man. This is jail. So I'm like, what you mean? He, like, he was like, man, every day, he said, I'm going to give it to you like this. He said, every day when I met you, I used to come to you and hit you with the most bullshit crack game, and you be giving me shit all day. And he said, in jail, niggas will hit you with that shit all day long and get everything you got. You can't be nice to every motherfucker who give you a little sob story. Oh, I don't got no this. I don't got no that. He said, nigga, that same shit I was running on you, I was running on four other, five other motherfuckers in the dorm. You understand what I'm saying? Look at my locker. I don't need nothing. I just run that crack game on niggas in the motherfucking dorm and they give me everything. So he like, I want to tell you this because now I fuck with you. And now I got love for you, little nigga. So he was like, so now I'm going to tell you like this. He said, when you finish fucking with me, no nigga will ever be able to run no game on you again ever. 
He said that he said you going to be able to smell it and see it 10 miles away on any type of game, any type of bullshit, con, scam, anything. You feel what I'm saying? Watch what I tell you. So I used to be in the dorm with some for months and months and months. You understand what I'm saying? And that nigga, my nigga, that nigga used to be coming at me with all type of different crack game and some shit I still be falling for. And he'd be like, look, nigga, you believe that bullshit that I just hit you with? You understand what I'm saying? Or other niggas, and he'll be like, you believe that bullshit that nigga just hit you with? That nigga's a liar, you understand what I'm saying? So now, this nigga had me so sharp, can't nobody come up to me, this is, I'm 17. So niggas that's schooling me to the game of just life and the hood, you understand what I'm saying? In jail, this nigga 45, maybe then at 50 years old. And he dropping these jewels on me. So now as I'm fucking with son, now he be coming up to me. Yo, I'll be like shooting shit down. Fuck out of here, nigga, with that bullshit. I don't want to hear that. You understand what I'm saying? He be laughing like, you getting sharp, young blood. You getting sharp. And I still be like this. Yo, he my man. So you get whatever the fuck from me. You my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? But he used to be testing me to see if I'll fall for the bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? So he was making me sharp. And this nigga was so real. Let me tell you how real this nigga was. He said, yo, he said, listen, bruh. That's how that nigga talk. He said, listen, bruh. He from the star. He said, I'm a crackhead, bruh. He said, I'm the, he said, all these niggas come in jail and they tell stories of how they was getting money and doing this and selling drugs and shooting niggas. He said, I'm a crackhead, bruh. He said, I'm the type of nigga you see when you walk to the store, you go to the train station, there's a nigga sleeping in the gutter right there, pissy drunk. That's me, bruh. He said, that's me. He said, I smoke crack and I love it and I ain't never gonna stop. He said, you see this koofy on my head? He said, when I get out this door, bruh, he said, this shit is a hustle, bruh. And let me tell you something. This nigga ran the Muslims. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it was other Muslim niggas stronger than him, but he was that type of nigga that niggas go to for advice. You understand what I'm saying? On what to do in the jail when it was beef, when it was anything. They went to him. This nigga straight crackhead. You feel what I'm saying? He said, this shit is a hustle, bro. He said, I love my Muslim brothers and I love Islam. He said, I love it with all my heart. He said, but guess what? He said, that crack shit got me, bro. And it got me for life. And he said, no matter what, I know. He said, I done did three or four bids. He said, no matter what, I know. If I don't know nothing else, I know when I go back to them streets, I'ma smoke that shit, nigga. You understand? He said, when I walk out this motherfucking door, I'ma spin this koofy up in the air like a motherfucking graduation cap. And I'm going straight to the crack man with the $40 they give me upon release. I'm going to spend 35 of that with the crack man. And I gotta get me a new stem, bruh. I'm a crackhead, bruh. He said, but I'm the realest nigga you ever gonna meet. And I'ma taste it, I ain't never gonna lie to you again. And I'ma tell you everything. This nigga was like, he said, listen, cause I ain't no good to nobody unless I'm in the penitentiary. He said, you see how I'm in this jail, moving and shaking and motherfuckers fuck with me and love me? He said, that's cause it ain't no crack in here. He said, I could go in here, I could go, to, I could be in here for five or six years and not smoke crack. When they open that motherfucking door, I'm going to buy that crack, bruh. You understand what I'm saying? Son, this nigga was giving it up as real as it could be gave up. You understand what I'm saying? As real, I'm 17 internalizing this nigga's, this nigga's shit. He's schooling me to half the fucking population of the planet Earth, my nigga. When I say that, I mean half the population of the planet Earth is bullshit ass niggas just hustling you. You understand what I'm saying? This nigga is letting it be known. So son is dropping these jewels on me, left and right. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm fucking with son. And son schooled me to the game. You feel what I'm saying? And after I stopped fucking with that nigga, I was sharp, bruh. I was sharp with niggas coming up to me trying to influence me or fool me. Couldn't do it no more, nigga, because I was fucking with that nigga Musaw. 
You understand what I'm saying? That nigga told me, he said, nigga, my, my wife and kids, they hate me, bruh. He said, nigga, I'm a fucking derelict. I'm a bum. He said, I'm a real bum. He said, you know how, he said, these niggas, he said, I'm going to tell you, I'm a real bum. I'm the type of bum, nigga. I sleep in the streets and piss. He said, I sleep in my own piss every night. He said, but in here, I'm the motherfucking man. He said, so that's half these niggas in here, nigga. Don't believe these niggas bullshit. Half these niggas in here, they ain't nothing but niggas like me. You understand what I'm saying? Nigga opening my eyes to all type of shit. You feel me? Then son got packed up and he went to fish kill for a medical. He had some medical shit to handle. This nigga getting his teeth done, all type of shit while he in the can. He said, bro, you see these teeth, bro? He said, when I came in here, bro, he said, all of this shit was black, rotten. I smoked all my teeth out, bruh. You hear me? He said, nigga, I'm in here. I got these new teeth, nigga. Niggas love me. You understand what I'm saying? If I tell a nigga, if I tell one of my Muslim brothers a nigga acted up in here, niggas, it'd be a motherfucking war up in here. He was like, this is the real jail. You want to know about jail? He said, I'm going to school you. You feel me? That's, my, that's what he did, my nigga. Like I said, he got packed up and went to Fishkill for a medical. The nigga came back after a few months. Fishkill is mad close to New York. The, at the time, Franklin, we ain't have none of that shit like MTV and none of that. Eventually, Franklin got that shit, but we ain't had none of that shit. That shit in the mountains by Canada. You feel what I'm saying? So my man, he comes back from Fishkill. He like, yo, come to the yard, bruh. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to see you in a little while. So I come to the yard. This nigga like... Listen, bruh, I'm going to tell you something, bruh. It's a new rapper that's out. And his name is Biggie Smalls. This was 9-4 in Franklin. He said, and he got this song where he's saying, if you don't know, now you know, nigga. But he was hearing the clean version, so he was saying, the hook be like, if you don't know, now you know. You feel what I'm saying? I'm like, who the fuck is that? He like, he taking over everything, bruh. He said he got the whole Brooklyn going crazy. The whole New York going crazy, bruh. Nobody ever saw a nigga like this before, bruh. He a fat nigga, bruh. He from the stock. Know what I mean? I'm like, he said his name is Biggie Smalls. Call my moms that night. Yo, Ma, I need you to get this album for me. Dude named Biggie Smalls. Ba 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 ba. Real talk, my nigga. My mom's found the album, sent that shit up. Ready to die. Like I said, at the time, I wasn't a rapper yet. I started trying to write rhymes on the low. Like 9 4, late 9 4, I was starting to try to jot a rhyme down or two, and they was trash. When I heard Ready to Die album, when I got Ready to Die album, I listened to the whole album. I ripped up all the rhymes I had, threw them shits away. I said, I'm not even going to play. I'm not even going to attempt to do this shit. If it's niggas out here nice like this, putting albums together like this, I know I'll never be that nice. So I just quit that shit for two years. I started writing rhymes again. And um, like late 9-6 or 9-7 in green. You understand what I'm saying? But this was 9-4. I heard Biggie album, I threw my rhyme book in the garbage, nigga. And that's a fact. That's how nice Biggie was. So, not only did son school me to the game, he's the first nigga who told me about B.I.G. You feel me? I don't know where that nigga is at today, but I really hope he not sleeping somewhere in the gutter. You feel what I'm saying? Like a bum, bruh. Cause that's my nigga. They're like jail and prison. They always get a stereotype of, uh, not I mean, homosexuality, jail sex, gay sex, things of that nature. Anytime people hit uh, jail or prison, that's what it's, that's what always in the back of motherfuckers' heads. You understand what I'm saying? So, I want to talk about the whole um, homosexual culture in the penitentiary. You understand what I'm saying? And how shit really is, and and, and the real truth behind everything. You feel what I'm saying? The bottom line is this, man. Like I told you, when I was 17 years old, 
I went to Franklin Correctional Facility. You understand what I'm saying? It was, it was mostly adults. We used to call that jail Freaklin. You understand what I'm saying? Because the level of homosexual activity in that jail was through the roof. You understand what I'm saying? Like booty bandit shit, straight gay sex. You understand what I'm saying? Transsexuals, all of that. The jail had dudes walking around with straight big titties and long hair and things of that nature like they was chicks you feel what i'm saying taking hormone pills and changing their bodies and things of that nature in the penitentiary this was way back in the 90s before that was so popular you understand what i'm saying <clears throat> so you know we live in the days and times now you got to be careful what you say cancel culture and all of that crazy shit but i'm telling you how it was in a penitentiary you understand what i'm saying so in the penitentiary of course uh gay sex jail sex that shit is heavily frowned upon by most people and motherfuckers be like i ain't fucking with a nigga if he fucking with a boy or if he engaging in any type of homosexual activity i ain't fucking with a nigga you understand what i'm saying that's what everybody mouth say but it's not the reality of the penitentiary you understand what I'm saying? The reality of the penitentiary is like this. A lot of motherfuckers engage in gay sex and a lot of motherfuckers don't. I know dudes who did 15, 20 years. And if you even come near them with that type of shit, they'll kill you. You feel what I'm saying? So it's a stereotype. They say, oh, you did 15, 20 years. You was having sex in jail. That's bullshit. You understand what I'm saying? I know a bunch of motherfuckers that did a bunch of time that you come up, you even you even mention some shit like that around them. My nigga, they gonna put that steel in you. You understand what I'm saying? So that's a stereotype. Not everybody engages in that shit in jail. And a lot of motherfuckers don't engage in that shit. And a lot of motherfuckers that want to be considered real niggas and thorough niggas and stand up niggas, they stay far away from that shit because they don't want that shit on their jacket at all. You feel what I'm saying? So, like I said, it's a stereotype. A lot of motherfuckers don't fuck around. But I will tell you this, in Franklin Correctional Facility, like I said, every jail is different. Different jails run differently. You understand what I'm saying? But in this particular jail, out of 50 motherfuckers in a dorm, 40 of them was engaging in some type of homosexual activity. You understand what I'm saying? Getting a dick suck, doing whatever they was doing. Like I said, I ain't here to judge a nigga. Me personally, I don't give a fuck. At this point in stage in my life, I can honestly say I don't give a fuck what a dude do with his dick. That's his dick, that's his business. Now I mean, I know what I do with my dick. You understand what I'm saying? So the bottom line is, um, like I said, in Franklin, a lot of motherfuckers was engaging in homosexual activity in jail sex. Me personally, I did six years in the penitentiary. I ain't never engaged in no shit like that. But I know motherfuckers who have engaged in shit like that. And I know motherfuckers who are real niggas that have engaged in shit like that. And some niggas may say, oh, he ain't a real nigga if he fucking with gay niggas and he fucking, I, I'm going to be the nigga to tell you, my nigga. That's false. That's false, my nigga. And any real jailer, any real nigga who know they was in a penitentiary for and came from behind them walls or, I mean, been in jail for a long period of time, they will tell you, my nigga. If every nigga who may stick his dick in another nigga is not a sucker, my nigga. You feel what I'm saying? And some of them niggas is killers. And I dare you to call them niggas a homo. You understand what I'm saying? I did. Some of the niggas who I was locked up with, that they were engaging in shit like that. They may have not been niggas who I was fucking with closely, but I dare you to call them niggas, yo, nigga, you a homo. Son, them niggas will body you. You understand what I'm saying? Them niggas will cut your whole face off. You understand what I'm saying? I know niggas. Now, it was a, it's, it was a, it's a it's a bunch of niggas that was in the state of New York prison system that was fucking with dudes, but these niggas pushed a knife, my nigga. These niggas pushed a knife, my nigga. So you ain't gonna be talking none of that gay shit to them. You understand what I'm saying? Cause they will push that knife in you. And that's a fact. You feel me? So one time I was in Franklin. Now I got some serious stories about Franklin. First of all, it's a difference between dudes who engage in gay sex in jail 
and, and um with you know transsexuals and shit like that and and dudes who are booty bandits booty bandits are dudes who like young boys you understand what i'm saying like niggas be 16 17 18 in their early 20s booty bandits are dudes that's old timers that they've been there for a long time and they like young boys and some of them they don't even want to fuck you they want you to fuck them i'm just keeping it a hundred with you so let me tell you some shit you know what i'm saying i was a six a 17 year old nigga with no hair on my face looking like the prettiest nigga on earth in jail you understand what i'm saying in prison with niggas who had 20 years in 15 years in you understand what i'm saying so um, so, so one time I come, so I'm in Franklin, know what I mean? I don't know no better. I'm 17 years old. Any nigga that's coming up to me, you understand what I'm saying? An adult now, keep this shit in mind. Niggas is so sick in the head in jail. I'm 17 years old and a booty bandit nigga who was in my dorm, he started trying to become my friend. Now this nigga never in his life made no type of sexual advance touched me or any crazy shit like that because i would have popped it off i draw the line with shit like that a nigga touching me i would have punched son in his face at 17 years old even you understand what i'm saying so and i'm gonna tell you another story about a booty bandit in comstock the, one of the illest stories on how shit went down one of the illest stories so boom so this booty bandit nigga starts trying to get cool with me right this nigga named Wade, you feel what I'm saying? This nigga start trying to get cool with me, right? So I'm 17, year old, 17 years old and naive. This nigga got 25 years in. You understand what I'm saying? He like, yo, what's up, young blood? You understand what I'm saying? He on some karate shit, old school 70s ass nigga. Now I mean, uh, the Mac, the pimp type nigga. Um, um, the Mac and Superfly type nigga. You feel what I'm saying? type of vibes he was on you feel me but the nigga was a smart nigga and me and the nigga started pollying so he was a cool ass nigga so sometimes i would walk to oh i thought he was a cool ass nigga so sometimes i would walk to chow with some shit like that so now niggas in the jail they thinking like oh this nigga with this young nigga uh oh this nigga trying to fuck this young nigga you feel what i'm saying me i'm 17 years old dumb as a motherfucker i'm just thinking he a cool cool ass older nigga you feel what i'm saying so, you know what I mean, I'm chilling and shit. I'm on the old side in Franklin. You feel me? So, like I said, this nigga never in his life tried to touch me, do anything, any of that crazy shit. He had tried to do that to some other nigga. I'll go into that. You know what I mean? But he had tried to do that to some other nigga. I didn't know nothing about this until later. So, one day, me and the nigga get into a little spat. So, remember, I'm 17 years old. None of these niggas is telling me nothing. None, because niggas in jail, niggas minding their business. So none of these older niggas is telling me nothing like, yo, my nigga, that nigga, that nigga's a booty bandit. Stay the fuck away from that nigga. None of these niggas is telling me this. You feel what I'm saying? So I'm walking around with that nigga and shit like that. So boom, some other shit. So some other shit happens in the dorm that I was in. Another nigga, at this time, niggas was calling me light. In the jail, on this, on the, in this particular dorm, niggas was calling me light, right? So this other nigga named light, that was in my dorm. This booty bandit nigga that, that was trying to become my friend, he had attempt, tried to make an attempt to rape this nigga one day. The nigga was in the bathroom taking a piss or whatever, and the nigga Wade just came up behind a nigga and tried to try to take his pants down or some wild shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? So niggas plucked Wade out. Bing bong, bing, 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 get the fuck out of here with that rapo shit. Niggas pounded him out. Bing bong, bing, bing, right? You understand what I'm saying? Couple of niggas who I knew. I didn't know nothing about this. This happened before I came to the dorm. So now I'm walking a child with this nigga and shit. Niggas is thinking, yo, you walking with a nigga who just tried to rape a nigga the other day. You feel what I'm saying? I don't know none of this. So um, one day I go into the day room. I had just came to the dorm. I go into the day room. So this old time nigga looking at me funny. So I'm like, yo, what's up, OG? What up? He like, yo, you got to get some shit straight, young blood. So I'm like, get some shit straight. What you talking about? He was like, first of all, the kid light that the nigga tried to rape, he also was engaging in homosexual sex in the dorm with somebody else. He was also engaging in jail sex in the dorm. You understand what I'm saying? I didn't know none of this. He was so this is why 
the booty banding nigga Wade felt like he was fair game to rape. Like, oh, you, 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 you gay nigga? You letting it be known? All right. You understand what I'm saying? So, so check it, right? So I comes in the day room. The nigga like, oh, the old timer is like, you gotta get some shit straightened out, young blood. Like, what's, what, what type of shit you want? So I said, what? What you talking about? He was like, I'm hearing shit about, now I mean, the kid like fucking with the, fucking with the gay nigga and all of that. Fucking with the, with the chump. Niggas used to call gay transsexuals chumps. You understand what I'm saying? So like, yo, he's like, yo, I heard you was fucking with the chump. So I said, what? I said, nigga, that ain't me. I said, what you, I said, what? That ain't, he said, oh, it ain't you. He was like, what's your name? I said, my name Light. You understand what I'm saying? So he was like, yo, well, that's what I'm hearing. That light fucking with the homo. You understand what I'm saying? That's what the nigga said. So he's like, that's what I'm hearing, nigga. That light fucking with the chump. So I was like, what? I said, hold on, nigga. I said, yo, I went in the day room. Real talk, I went in the day room. Everybody was watching TV. I went in the day. I can't remember if I turned the TV off or just stood in front of the TV. And I was like, yo, look, I'm new in this dorm. No disrespect. I'm new in this dorm, but I'm going to let y'all niggas know something. It's a lot of things being done in this dorm under a different, under with whoever name is light. I said, my name is Lotus. My real name, Brian. Whatever. Call me whatever you want to call me. Just don't call me light because I don't want nobody getting shit confused with me. You understand what I'm saying? Because I ain't doing shit, nigga, and I don't fuck with no chumps. You feel what I'm saying? This is what I said. So I was like, I don't want niggas getting confused whatever the fuck other niggas is doing with what I'm doing. You understand what I'm saying? So niggas was like, yo, I respect that. I respect that. This jail. Niggas gonna respect that when, you know what I mean, when you speak up about shit like that. So niggas like, yo, I respect that. I said, so then I started finding out what happened with the kid light, with the nigga Wade, whatever the fuck, whatever. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm like, oh, word. So still son never tried me on nothing sexual none of that so or never even mentioned shit like that to me because he was type scared of me you understand what i'm saying because he know i was a fiery type of little young nigga with him like in our conversations he knew nigga you understand what i'm saying so he was very cautious with me because booty bandits be mad pussy you understand what i'm saying they if you if you pull out some steel on them niggas or something them niggas be running you understand what i'm saying so boom so the nigga the nigga said something to me that i don't like and I barked on the nigga. I'm like, nigga, fuck you think you my pops? Fuck away from me. You understand what I'm saying? And I stopped fucking with the nigga. So niggas in the dorm thought that, oh, this nigga must have tried the young nigga. And the young nigga stood up for himself. And now they don't fuck with each other no more. But that wasn't the case. The case was he said some shit I ain't like. And I told the nigga to fuck off. You understand what I'm saying? And I never fucked with the nigga again. So I remember I was in the compound. You understand what I'm saying? I was walking around the compound. And I seen a nigga, um, Baja. Now I mean, the same nigga that 50 Cent was fucking with the nigga Monster. You understand what I'm saying? I see the nigga Baja. At this time, Baja mad young. Baja was a legend in the four building. Sun Gun was going off crazy. You understand what I'm saying? And I didn't know Sun at the time, but he was locked up with my cousin. You understand what I'm saying? Slills. And my uncle was in the jail, who was my enlightener that gave me knowledge itself. My uncle was in that jail, and everybody knew my uncle Kasim. Niggas love my uncle Kasim. So Kasim, he he thinking he trying to protect me as his nephew. He telling niggas, yo, it's some booty bandit nigga trying to talk to my nephew in there. You understand what I'm saying? So I seen a nigga Baja. So Baja was like, hey yo, Brian, what's up, son? He like, yo, you good over there in that dorm? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. Why what's up? Like I said, this nigga never tried me on no sexual shit or no crazy shit like that. So I didn't even really know what son was talking about like that. So he was like, yo, son, word the mother, son. You good over there? He said, son, word of my mother, any one of them niggas try to play you or anything like that in that motherfucking dorm, son, you let me know, son. I'll blow one of them niggas' faces off. Like, you know what I mean? Those type of vibes. The nigga Baja, the nigga monster. So for that, I always got love for son because like I said, it's jail. Niggas don't gotta show no love to you. You on your own in there. You understand what I'm saying? So son was a type of nigga, he was letting it be known. I barely knew son, but he was letting it be known, son. If niggas try to play you with any type of booty man and shit or anything like that, let it be known, son. So for that type of real nigga shit, I always have respect for son. You feel what I'm saying? And love for son for that. Real talk. So you know, in jail, man, I know some dudes that it's like this, my nigga. If you wanna, if you wanna be a bitch, niggas will fuck you like a bitch. If you gonna let them fuck you, they'll fuck you. But if you that, if you the type of nigga where you ain't having that type of shit, they ain't never gonna try to come at you like that, or they ain't never gonna bring that type of shit around you. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's crazy in the in the can, my nigga. Like I said, I know some niggas that'll put that steel up in you, period. You feel what I'm saying? And they fuck with 
they do them in the jail with whatever they do. You feel what I'm saying? Like, boom, I'm gonna tell you some shit. Like one time, I mean, I'm in the motherfucking dorm. You understand what I'm saying with this dude? This nigga was from Long Island, but he was from, he was from like, you know, the super suburb rich part of Long Island, not the hood, because it be niggas in Long Island from in the can up north that be getting super busy. I was in a jail before where Long Island niggas had that shit so under smash that they was oppressing niggas in the jail. I'm gonna tell that story soon. You feel what I'm saying? So basically, this kid from Long Island, now I mean, son was son was a son was a he wasn't really that young at all. I was the young nigga. I'm 17. This nigga was like 25. You feel what I'm saying? But he was from, like I said, the super suburbs of Long Island. So he wasn't built for no form of jail whatsoever at all, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? And he was in Franklin. And I kid you not, my nigga. This is when I learned at a young age how heartless jail is. You understand what I'm saying? This nigga, bro, first of all, this nigga had stupid bread. You understand what I'm saying? Like, his family, whatever, they had paper, my nigga. This nigga had the greatest Sony Walkman, the most expensive headphones, a whole fucking locker full of tapes, food, anything you could think of, this nigga had. He was very well taken care of in the can. You understand what I'm saying? So niggas ain't no son. Eventually, niggas found out son was mad soft. You heard? So now... Niggas in, the, in, in in my dorm, they starting to squeeze the nigga and extort the nigga, slowly but surely. You feel what I'm saying? So, now this nigga, now niggas find out he fair game, it start getting hectic for the nigga. You feel me? I don't know what happened. Oh, the, the same nigga, the same nigga, that nigga Wade that I was telling you about that was a booty bandit, this is what I found out. Like I said, I don't fuck with the nigga no more. You understand what I'm saying? So this is what I found out. One day, the nigga Wade crept up in the little nigga cube. Like, in the dorm is cubes. It's, it's 50, 60 beds. It's 60 beds. 10 of them is double bunk. 50 of them is regular. You understand what I'm saying? Or 40 of them is regular. You understand what I'm saying? And those regular, dorm, those regular beds, they each have a partition. On the side, you understand what I'm saying? Like you got a, a a wall here and a wall there and a wall behind you, but no wall in front of you for you to walk in. So we call it just cubes. You understand what I'm saying? Cause it's shaped like a cube, a square. So um I hear the nigga Wade creeps into the nigga, creeps into the nigga cube on the late night like this. Now I mean while the nigga sleep, nigga comes up on the little nigga, pulls his pants down. Little nigga jumps up like I call I'm calling him a little nigga, but he was older than me and and he was a little nigga to me then You understand what I'm saying? Cuz the nigga was like, you know, he was acting like a little ass kid. You feel what I'm saying? So Niggas pulled the nigga pants down the nigga weighed like this is what this is what I heard This is what niggas told me nigga weighed like this. Yo, chill out man nigga. Let me do this Let me do this pulls the nigga pants down sucks the nigga dick you know what I mean he sucks the little nigga dick the little nigga ain't even want his dick suck. He sucks the little nigga dick. You feel what I'm saying? So now he done basically molested this little nigga. You feel what I'm saying? So now once that happened, now he's super fair game. Now niggas is like, what? This nigga let niggas, this nigga let a nigga motherfucking pull his pants down and suck his dick? This nigga fair game for real. So now, niggas, the word spreads through the compound. Yo, this nigga ran down on this nigga. You know what I mean? blew his beef right quick and that nigga held it down you feel what i'm saying so now he fair game my nigga so now word to anything i love this nigga walking through the through compound going to chow and niggas from other dorms like i said this is when i started understanding how heartless and predatory jail was you understand what I'm saying? prison was so niggas found that out niggas is walking up to that nigga straight up and down on the walkway like this and yo shorty niggas was calling the nigga shorty li you understand what i'm saying so niggas was like, hey yo, shorty a lot. Nigga was like, yo, word the mother, my nigga, come to the gym tonight at 8 o'clock. Nigga, you gonna suck this dick. You heard me? Niggas is running up on this little nigga on the walkway like, yo, nigga, you better come to the gym tonight at 8 o'clock. Now I mean, niggas making this little nigga come to the gym. So he comes back to the dorm. He like, yo, niggas just press me. He asked somebody, yo, niggas just pressed me, told me to come to the gym tonight to suck their dick. What should I do? So niggas is like, what? This nigga talking about what should I do? Nigga, if you even gotta ask that, 
nigga, you on your own. You understand what I'm saying? So this nigga start going to the gym, sucking niggas off in the in the back room, in the back store. You understand what I'm saying? Unbelievable. They making this nigga suck cock in the back. And this nigga coming through sucking cock and coming back to the dorm. So now niggas is really going to violate this nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, my nigga, this nigga was rich. This nigga had bread. This nigga whole locker was packed like a motherfucking store. You understand what I'm saying? You know what niggas did to this nigga? Like I said, currently he's sucking cock in the gym. Niggas is pressing him in the dorm. Niggas blowing his meat. You understand what I'm saying? He holding all of this shit down, my nigga. You understand what I'm saying? Like in jail, if you don't stand up for yourself, Lord knows what niggas may do to you. You feel what I'm saying? So this other nigga from the Ville, I ain't gonna mention name, too many names in this story because they was doing this little nigga wrong. You feel what I'm saying? So this other nigga I know from the Ville, I don't, I ain't no son, matter of fact. Son is a, I'm a 17 year old kid. Son is a grown ass man and he a nigga that's kind of like a legend in Brownsville. You understand what I'm saying? Now I mean, so I don't know son like that. Now I mean, but with me, he cool. You understand what I'm saying? But I don't know him like that at all. You feel what I'm saying? But, um, so one day, like I said, this nigga, this little nigga locker was through the roof packed, like shit, like next level shit. Like this nigga was rich, like. So, niggas be popping lockers. You understand what I'm saying? Like, niggas pop niggas lockers. Like, you could put a towel inside of a combination lock and stuff the towel inside the, the hope, opening of that shit till it's so tight that it can't really move. And you yank that shit as hard as you can. Wah! That shit'll pop the whole combination lock open. Bop! So, that's how niggas used to pop niggas locker. You understand what I'm saying? Put your combination lock back on. You come in, you open your locker with your combination lock, everything gone. You're like, what the fuck? You understand what I'm saying? So niggas took it to the next level with this little nigga. Niggas motherfucking nigga went to the nigga was at programs and shit. The little the the the, the, the kid from Long Island, the shorty L.I., he was at programs and shit. Niggas took the nigga whole locker, my nigga. Niggas lifted his whole locker up, carried that shit into a empty into an empty cube, and then took the empty cubes locker, empty locker, and put it in his shit. So when nigga comes back from programs, he goes into his locker, opens his shit, his shit straight empty. Niggas got everything, his Walkman, his motherfucking headphones, like 40 tapes, his Tims, his army. This nigga had like, this nigga had everything you could have in jail. Any and everything that you allowed to have in jail, that nigga had. You understand what I'm saying? Motherfucking uh, custom blankets, sheets, motherfucking lamps, anything you could have, he had. You understand what I'm saying? So... Niggas took everything. Niggas stripped his entire cube, his entire locker. He came back to an empty cube. So he like, what the fuck? So he don't know what to do, right? This is how I learned a valuable lesson in jail with this situation. He don't know what the fuck to do, right? So it's this other nigga in the dorm. For the sake of this, let's just call him Spicy. So the nigga Spicy, he the type of nigga like this. Son engages in jail sex, and I honestly think Son is, he's sort of like a booty bandit, like he a fucking young nigga, you understand what I'm saying? But I honestly think Son was just a gay dude, you understand what I'm saying? Like he wasn't a dude that came to jail and became gay, or came to jail and started experimenting, I think Son was just a straight gay dude, and he get busy. Son was mad prolic. Son had about 15 years in. He was stupid, crazy cut up. And he was a good fucking dude. You understand what I'm saying? Son was a good dude. If you wasn't gay or you wasn't a sucker that'd get his ass taken, son was a good nigga. That was my man. You understand what I'm saying? Son never tried no bullshit with me, never mentioned no bullshit, never did none of that with me. You understand what I'm saying? And I know he was a booty banded ass nigga. You understand what I'm saying? But son is also the type of nigga came from behind the wall and Clinton and all of that. And he would get busy and all of that disrespect and shit, calling that nigga a homo or a chump. That nigga kill you. You understand what I'm saying? That's the type of nigga he was. And he was a laid back nigga, but he was known niggas done everything. I mean, anytime niggas mention his name, niggas would be like, boy, don't play with that nigga spicy. That nigga will put that motherfucking steel up in you. You understand what I'm saying? So he was from Long Island. You understand what I'm saying? So the little nigga runs to him for help. Yo, niggas, yo, niggas took my whole locker. 
You feel what I'm saying? Niggas took my whole locker. I don't know what to do. Right? So now this nigga, like I said, valuable lessons about jail. So all of these niggas is sitting in the day room. The niggas who really took his shit. You understand what I'm saying? They sitting in the day room watching TV. This little nigga goes and tells the nigga Spicy what happened. You feel what I'm saying? So Spicy comes in the day room with the little nigga. And he like, yo, word the mother. Nigga pulls out a fucking sword. You hear me? This in Franklin. This nigga pulls out a fucking sword that was the length of a nigga leg. He like, pick one of these niggas. Pick one of these motherfuckers. Which one you think took your shit, nigga? Pick one. And I'm going to stab the nigga to death right here. Pick one. Nigga shit like this. Zhoom. Nigga had the motherfucking He-Man sword, nigga. I'm sitting in the back of the day room. I'm like, this nigga got the He-Man. Nigga had Excalibur. Nigga was like, pick one of these motherfuckers. Nigga, I stabbed this nigga to death right here in this day room right now. Shorty froze. He like, he don't want to see nobody get stabbed the fuck up. You understand what I'm saying? He like, I don't know which one it was. I don't know which one it was. He like, when you figure out which one it was, nigga, you let me know. You understand what I'm saying? So now Shorty is like, feeling a little bit better. Like, damn, niggas took my shit, but at least I had my nigga... Now I mean, go come over there, back them niggas down with the big stupid sword, threw them niggas under mad pressure. You understand what I'm saying? Like I said, jail lessons. You feel what I'm saying? So boom, the nigga goes to the school building. He decides he's gonna pull a stunt to get out the jail. The nigga tries to sneak a piece of sharp wood out of the wood shop class and gets caught with the shit on purpose, basically. And then when they catch him, they're like, what the fuck you doing with this? He starts telling, yo, niggas is robbing me. They making me suck dick. They making me do this. They making me do that, right? So they pack the nigga up and get the nigga out of there. You understand what I'm saying? And put him in the box. Now remember, up north, there is no PC up north. If you sign a PC, you're going to the box where you're going to be locked down 23 hours a day, probably 24. You understand what I'm saying? So there is no PC up north. You understand what I'm saying? So... They come pack this nigga out. They come pack this nigga, get this nigga out the jail. You feel what I'm saying? 20 minutes later after they get this nigga out of the jail, guess who in the day room laughing and joking with the niggas who robbed this nigga for his locker and all his property? The nigga Spicy. All of that shit was an act, my nigga. He knew that little nigga wasn't ready to see no bloodshed. He knew that nigga wasn't going to pick one of them niggas to stab them niggas up. He was fronting like he was holding a nigga down. When that nigga left, he got half of that shit that they, they robbed that little nigga for. So like I said, jail lessons, nigga. Nothing is as it seems. So check it. I'm going to tell you how one time a basketball game turned extremely bloody. Now me and Franklin. So boom. And this is when I first got to Franklin like... I'm in H2. So I'm in there with a lot of good dudes. Like, my nigga Mike. Now, I got a few stories that surround my nigga Mike. You understand what I'm saying? Some dudes names I'm gonna mention, some dudes I'm not. You understand what I'm saying? But basically, like, boom. So, now I mean, I'm fucking with my son Mark from the Bronx. Like, I think son from 143rd, that's my son. Been looking for that nigga since I came home from the pen. Still ain't he the only nigga I ain't bump into since I came home from the pen. I'm in there with my son Pop from the Bronx. These niggas all older than me. You understand what I'm saying? And they all show me love. You feel what I'm saying? And they fuck with me. Sometimes that love be tough love, but not me. Niggas fuck with me. Not me. So I'm fucking with my son Stokes. My son Stokes. He's a funny ass nigga. He ain't on no street shit. Or none of that hoodlum type of shit. He just a regular black nigga that's a funny motherfucker. My nigga Stokes. This nigga used to tell me I used to rap in my sleep. This was in 9-4. He used to be like, yo, my nigga, you be rap. He'd be like, I'm telling you, boy, you rap in your sleep. I was like, niggas, what are you talking about? He like, you be spitting raps. And he start calling niggas. He like, yo, come, come. He like, what this nigga be doing in his sleep? 
Niggas like, yo, you shouldn't even be rapping, son. You be spitting verses. So I'm like, it's probably shit that I be listening to. Niggas, like, niggas used to be like, nah, son. I never heard these bars, son. And, and these shits be fire. So I said, who the fuck bars is they like? He's like, I don't know, son, but it's fire. Real talk. You know what they say. Whatever you do in your sleep is what you meant to do. What you destined to do. So I mean, this nigga, my son Stokes, be like, yo, you be rapping full songs in your fucking sleep, my nigga. But anyway. So I'm fucking with my other bro. That who name I can't remember right now. It's unbelievable I can't remember son name right now. Because this was my son crazy. Um, I can't remember son name, but check it. Remember the booty bandit that I told you? The dude Wade? The nigga who pulled the nigga pants down and sucked the nigga off and all of that? This is his brother. You understand what I'm saying? His blood brother, my nigga. But he don't fuck with the nigga because his brother is on some booty bandit shit. This is my son, his name will come back to me. This nigga like 40 something years old. Like I said, I'm 17, you know what I mean? But this nigga, this nigga was my son. This was my real, he was a real nigga, right? This nigga is locked up for, son is from the Ville and all of that. Like he from, he from up the hill. You understand what I'm saying? Or either he from up the hill or from the style. You understand what I'm saying? Son had been literally locked up since the days of the Tomahawks. You understand what I'm saying? An old school Brownsville gang. You understand what I'm saying? And he was a jolly stomper. And he was locked up for killing a tomahawk. At the time, I think son had like 20 something joints in or something crazy like that. I don't remember. But he a quiet motherfucker and he a real motherfucker and he a lifer. Clinton ass behind the wall Max ass nigga You know what I mean And he don't fuck with the nigga Wade And it's funny because I stopped communicating with the nigga Wade And then son became my man like crazy You understand what I'm saying So I used to fuck with son like crazy You know what I mean Like I said I was surrounded by nothing but Old time ass life ass niggas Clinton ass niggas You understand what I'm saying so my other man that I fuck with, who's his name intertwines into a few more stories and it gets real crazy. You understand what I'm saying? My son is from Harlem. He an old school nigga too. And he came to jail with a regular. Son came to jail with 40 robbery charges. You understand what I'm saying? Son had 40, showed me his rap sheet. Son had 40 armed robberies. And it was ran concurrent and son had um, a six to 18. You understand what I'm saying? Or six to 12, something like that. So son doing his bid. His brother gets killed while he doing his bid. Son is in motherfucking, um, either in Sing Sing or in Clinton. I think in Clinton, matter of fact. I think it was Clinton. Son was in Clinton and them niggas was having movie night and the nigga who killed his brother came through Clinton. So now this nigga only got a 6 to 18 or 6 to 12. Now I mean niggas tell him, yo, that nigga who killed your brother, he here and he gonna be in the movies tonight. You understand what I'm saying? So my nigga is like, I gotta put some type of work in on this nigga. You feel what I'm saying? So my nigga stabs the nigga up in the movie theater, tries to murk the nigga, and paralyzes the nigga. Paralyzes him. You feel me? So he catches a new charge. They rearrest the nigga, resentence him. So now he got now he got an eight to life. That starts after the six to twelve. Once he see out on the six to twelve or the six to eighteen or wh whichever one it was, they rearrest the son for the eight to life. So now son got eight to life for stabbing the nigga up in the movie theater in Clinton. Um, the nigga who killed his brother. So now we in Franklin together. Son is about at this time 35 years old. I'm 17 years old, like I said. But this nigga was like my right hand man. Me and son was eating together. He was another nigga that sniffed that D. A lot of niggas in that mountain, in the mountain, sniffed that D because bro, that that time be hard, bro. That time be hard. So niggas be looking for an escape from that shit. You understand what I'm saying? So, he a, he a 35 year old nigga, he sniffed dope, but son keeps it official with me. You understand? He keeps it official. He tells me straight up, yo son. You understand what I'm saying? He ain't tell me everything, and that's another story that I'ma tell niggas that's a heartbreaking story. You feel what I'm saying? But, um, Basically, niggas is real niggas in the dorm. It's good niggas in the dorm. I'm fuck with niggas. I'm the youngest nigga in the whole jail at the time, like I told y'all niggas. You understand what I'm saying? And this is a jail with like a, like 1,600 inmates. And the shit is a compound the size of like, uh, like let's say, uh, from like uh, when you first hit Fulton Street, like from on, from on J side, all the way to like maybe Farragut. 
That's how big the jail is. Like, you understand what I'm saying? From Fulton Street, downtown Brooklyn, walking to Farragut Projects, that's the size of Franklin. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe. So, we in a dorm one day. Now, my nigga who I fuck with in the dorm, that Sniff D, that's, that had the 40 robberies and stabbed the nigga. Son is dumb, nice, and basketball. He be busting niggas' ass. So, he be having the whole house hype, and niggas be playing ball. You feel what I'm saying? He be busting niggas' ass. One day, niggas go to the gym. I don't even go with niggas. Niggas told me what happened after shit happened. You understand what I'm saying? So, I, niggas go to the gym. So, while they balling, this nigga that's in the dorm, he from Long Island. I hate to keep saying shit. Like, I'm going to tell a story about the crazy real Long Island niggas I know and crazy goons and gangsters from Long Island that I know that was running jails and all type of shit. I'm going to tell the stories of them niggas too. But it's just coincidentally, this nigga happened to be from Long Island too. You feel me? So, he comes in the dorm. Like I said, niggas don't know him like that. This nigga from Long Island. He just came in the dorm. And really, he's not really a street dude. He's just a regular dude who got locked up. Everybody in jail ain't some street ass nigga. Some niggas just committed a crime, went to jail this first time in their life and they locked up and it's a rap. You feel what I'm saying? And he was one of those type of niggas. He wasn't really a street nigga, but he just was a regular nigga. But his mouth, it was his first time in jail. He came straight from Oster to Franklin. So he ain't never like really been nowhere. So this nigga mouth was mad loose. He was talking to niggas greasy. Like he just be talking to niggas a little bit too greasy. So niggas is like really don't really feel a nigga like that. But niggas ain't saying nothing. And he an older dude too. He a nigga well in his 30s. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, so niggas go play basketball in the gym one day. So, um, my man. These other, these other two niggas, they all play. These other two niggas from the house and other niggas from my house, they playing basketball. So this nigga is playing with them. And he he talking major shit like, y'all niggas, yo, play some fucking defense, nigga. The fuck is you doing? That nigga busting your ass. He beating you up on the motherfucker. That nigga posting you up. What the fuck is wrong with you? So he talking to niggas like that. That's These niggas is gangsters. You feel what I'm saying? Right, niggas is like. Who is this nigga talking to? Like, niggas don't even know this. We don't even know this nigga. So, like I said, the whole gym wreck run, he's talking mad reckless to niggas playing ball, getting too high. This is why I don't really do sports in jail amongst niggas I don't know. If I'm going to play ball, it's going to be my peoples. I'm not playing ball with some next niggas because that shit is a recipe for destruction in jail. You feel what I'm saying? So, this nigga talking mad greasy to these niggas, and this nigga don't know this nigga. They don't know this nigga. So, boom. They come back, they come back from the gym. Niggas come back from the gym, niggas putting their shit in their locker. So I'm seeing, I'm seeing movement. So I'm like, yo, so I tell my son, like, yo, son, what happened? What's going on? So he was like, yo, my man was like, my son that sniffed the dope and shit. He was like, yo, this nigga was talking mad reckless to these young boys. And he don't know these young boys. Like, these niggas ready to tear his brain out. You understand what I'm saying? So them niggas ain't had no ratchet. So man passes them niggas a ratchet like this yo boom so i'm like oh shit it's going down you understand what i'm saying so now they back from playing basketball so niggas is in the day room the kid is in the day room the nigga who was talking shit he still stayed stayed down he ain't even at first it was two niggas that was going to see some one had a ratchet my man passed the nigga I might, my man might have passed two ratchets to them niggas but they both had ratchets right the nigga is sitting in the day room with this other nigga who is a nigga that's my man from Brooklyn too That son was a wild nigga You understand what I'm saying Whose name I ain't gonna mention But he's sitting next to the nigga You understand what I'm saying He wasn't at the gym So he don't know what the fuck was going on at the gym So this nigga is in the motherfucking day room Sitting in there So now I'm in the day room So like I hear the door come The door open now in the day room You know it's a TV on the outside There's a TV on the inside You understand what I'm saying The inside TV that shit is in a glass room. You go in there, you close the door, the whole room is glass, real glass. The nigga who name I ain't gonna mention, he comes in the he comes in the day room with his man. The nigga is sitting in the back of the day room. You know it'd be cigarette. At this time you could smoke. So it was cigarette butt cans all over the floor where niggas uses the ashtray. You understand what I'm saying? So this nigga comes in a, in a joint. He like, yo, my nigga. He comes in, he like, yo, my nigga, who the fuck you was talking to on a basketball court like that? Who you was talking to on a basketball court? So the nigga looks, he see these niggas got ratchets in their hands. 
the nigga tries to jump up and pick up a chair. Now these them hard, hard chairs. You feel me? The nigga, the nigga jumps up, picks up a chair, and he swings the shit at the nigga. Wong hits the nigga with the chair. One of the niggas, he rags him. Wong in his face. Wong blew the nigga. Boom. His other man come around, blow the nigga. Boom. So now them niggas jump on top of the nigga. It's two of these niggas tearing this nigga ass up, whipping this nigga up. So check this real shit. Them niggas had made friends with some Buffalo nigga. Now I know y'all niggas know I was beefing with Conway and shit. And I be shitting on Buffalo, fucking with Conway. I shit on Buffalo just to make Conway mad. Because I was up north with some real Buffalo niggas that get it in crazy. So I know Buffalo get it in crazy. I know Buffalo is the hood. I know niggas from Buffalo is real niggas. I know all of that. I just like to fuck with Conway. You know, this, They had made friends with some Buffalo kid who was also brand new up north. I mean, and... He was talking to them niggas for like two, three days, but they was mad. It got mad cool. They was going to chow together. They was eating together. So they started fucking with the little buffalo dude. You understand what I'm saying? So he didn't know what the fuck was popping off. He seen his mans in there tearing that nigga up, and he ran up in there too with them niggas and started tearing the nigga up with them. Bing, bong, bong, bing, bing. So these niggas is in the motherfucking day room scrapping crazy. I jump up, I'm trying to move out the fucking way because these niggas is coming towards me like fighting. You understand what I'm saying? The whole day room getting up, moving out the way. So these niggas is tussling crazy. Boom, boom. They stay washing this nigga, smashing this nigga with the chair. They picking up chairs. They hitting the nigga in the head with the chair. Bong, bong. Now I mean niggas is cutting this nigga. All three of these niggas is tearing this nigga the fuck up, my nigga. I kid you not, this is word, this is my word is bond. Real talk, my nigga. Like I told you, the little day room is glass. The whole little day room was red, covered in blood. Every window was covered with blood. You could not see inside of the little day room because all of the windows were red with blood. That is my word. You understand what I'm saying? And them niggas was still in there getting it the fuck in everybody that ran out these niggas scrapping so hard they break like two of the glasses so now the day room window is broke you understand what i'm saying and these niggas is still in there popping they cutting this nigga up a hundred times you feel what i'm saying so this nigga comes out the nigga who they cut up this nigga leaking Leaking, dripping blood everywhere. The whole floor is red, my nigga. The whole floor of the day room was red. All of the windows, the ones that wasn't broken out, them shits was red, my nigga. Real fucking talk. So they snatched these little niggas up. They snatched all of these niggas up. These niggas was older than me, but they was young niggas. You feel what I'm saying? So they snatched all these niggas up, took niggas to the box. I don't know what happened to the little buffalo nigga, but he just seen his mans popping and he popped off with his mans and got stupid. And they cuffed him up and took the nigga out there too. You understand what I'm saying? He, the main nigga that ran up on him in the first place that wanted to cut the nigga, they took him to the box. Nigga starved him. I heard that one of the police got cut by mistake while tussling with them niggas. Nigga, police cut his hand by tussling with them niggas by one of the razors or something like that. So for revenge, niggas, I heard they starved son in the box for like 10 days, my nigga. 10 days, they didn't feed this nigga. Or when they did feed him, they was pissing in his food and spitting in his food and shit like that. And he seen it, so he just didn't eat. Son came out, he was dumb, slim, and fucked up. Like, yo, these niggas starved me in the box. But the nigga must ain't snitch because he didn't go to jail. He came back to population. So the nigga who they tore up crazy like that, he must have kept it official, my nigga. Real fucking talk. And I was in Franklin. Basketball game went haywire. And that's a fact. Mark Waldo Ward and G from the shop. You know what time it is, guys. The new podcast. You know what? Listen to these guys. They're educational. They're informative. They're funny. It's swagger. Just, just a fella sometimes, you know? So uh, shout out to you guys. Big fans. I appreciate your work. Keep it up, guys.